fun. <clears throat> All right, folks, let's a cool knife to demo. Huh? Sorry, guys, I was just on another platform actually. Um, demonstrating some broided sharpening and I should have gotten a little bit more ready for this. So, uh, welcome to a video here on YouTube for a change in life. Uh, I usually, or like life mode, I usually do this over on Instagram. I'm not even sure which uh, perspective is probably better, if it's landscape or if it is uh, portrait uh, or like uh, vertical. Usually um, I do everything in vertical, but you know what? Let's just try this. Now, um, something you can probably see, which I'm gonna tell you or like show you in a second, is um, I have two Tormex lined up here uh, with 20. These are both T4s, both with diamond steels, coarse over here, fine over here. Now, Tormek out of Sweden, which I visited uh, last October when I went up to Sweden, drove around 7,500 kilometers, um, did um, carving. Seminars um, all over Sweden, uh, forged sunlight blades with a friend of mine, uh, made a lot of knives, a lot of sheaths, um, sold a lot, and uh, the rest of the time I ran around in minus 20 degree forest um, looking for moose uh, successfully. Uh, so that was two months up there, and uh, I um, have been working with Tonic for quite a while now. Um, do a lot of testing, do a lot of hard use on them because, um, of course, I'm using them for my work. Uh, just to give you an example, um, the other day I launched 10 vintage Moras, um, something like this. This one is actually going to Japan, I think. Um, vintage, good old steel, and they're all getting a hollow grind to perfection on my Tormex. These knives deserve to have another life, and uh, I'm going to take you through this entire um, I'll take you through this entire process today, but I want to talk about the jig first. So, the um, regular uh, knife jig that comes with the Tormek is this old one. Um, I'm not even sure anymore what the name of this is. Uh, new one is the KJ45, which is a um, knife jig 45 millimeters wide. Uh, what are the differences? Let me just bring it in a little bit. I'm going to go through this. Uh, rather quickly, I did a long live video on Instagram the other day. Number one, this is the old one, this is the new one. Um, the new one is a lot smaller, lighter. It has, as you can see, I ground these down quite a bit doing very small knives and I would touch the jig all the time, which I don't really care about. Um, I don't care for it too much, but I also don't really care about it too much. Um, the new ones come with a smaller angle on the cheeks. The knob on the bit, the new one is a lot smaller by about like two thirds, not to get somehow tangled up with the bar system on the Tormex and these getting in the way. Uh, it is a shorter shank. And here's the most important part. This one was a main body um, being clamped to the body. So it was never centered on both sides. This one is an entirely centered system. So ideally, you can just flip around and get the same bevel angle on the other side with a lot of adjustment without a lot of adjustments, um, which is a big deal. Most knives that are really, um, let's say, precisely made, you can just do that. A lot of old knives, hand forged knives, you might need a little bit of adjustment, but nowhere near this, which was literally a main body. Um, everything was really offset in a way. So as soon as you flipped it around to the other side, you had to completely adjust your jig or like rather your um, sharpening device again. Another very big deal, the old one here had a cast shank with threads um, and then this distance um, checking or distance fine adjustment tool, uh, of course plastic against metal threads. This one got a little bit of a wobble over time so I talked to Wolfgang um, to get me another one and he said um, just hold out a little bit, there's something new on the way. I did and I'm very happy I did because these are awesome. Um, so when I was up there, I was able to share my two cents about a couple of jigs and how these could be improved as well um, for us um, Sloyd style carvers with a little bit different tools. 
Um, I'm sure they need, didn't need my advice on anything at all, but it was uh, it was really nice that they at least listened to me about a couple of things. Other than that, clamping system is the same. Open this knob, tighten down this knob, then tighten this knob. Um, the knives usually don't move at all. Uh, big deal for this, um, uh, let's just say, the problem with this was that you had a hard stop. Uh, sometimes the bar didn't want to slide too much. You had a hard stop and then knives that needed to be swiveled, which is usually the case with very curved knives. They don't want to go straight across and then be lifted up at the tip. I'm gonna, you're going to see that in a minute. Um, they want to be swiveled, which is really difficult because, of course, there's a hard stop and then the swiveling is only happening on the outside here. Plus, it got a little bit of movement over time. So with the new one, you have two things you can do. And I'm going to show you this over on the um, the Tormig itself here. Best, I think this is going to be a lot more easy to understand than if I'm just rambling. So there they are, the puppies. So the idea was originally that you're going to be able to have a hard 90 degree stop, go across and if you had a knife that it was just straight and then with a tip like this, you could just lift it up towards the tip and get the, um, the tip sharpened, which usually results in a little bit smaller bevel angle or like a steeper angle, higher angle at the tip because of you coming inside of this radius here, it's getting shorter of a distance towards the bar. That means you get a steeper bevel angle. Now, because of this being rounded on the outside, in order to swivel it, that was kind of a little bit clunky. So what they did with the new one is there's a double stop. There's one here that is just a stop, but it doesn't give you any bar, which means you get a perfect distance, but you can almost perfectly just swivel it, which is very important for um, anything that is a little bit more curved blade. Um, I don't know if I have anything here that is like that. Um, it's mainly what you would use for, for skinning knives, for example. Um, so if you have something like a longer curve, like on this knife I have here on my belt, for example, which is more of a, um, a hunting knife, it doesn't have a short abrupt curve, but a longer belly, which means that if I'm just lifting it up, I get a very steep bevel here. I have a line actually that I put here on the Tormig in the past just to show that effect. Um, if I'm putting it in here, Just like that, parallel to the blade. And I'm pulling it just across. You see at the very end, the distance to this line here becomes very big. In a little bit closer. That more, you see how it's close to the line, coming across and I'm just lifting up and all of a sudden there's like an inch inside of this distance which means it's becoming a lot steeper because you with this distance to this bar here this is how you're setting the angle it's not going to be crazy much because this is not a distance here but it's actually a distance here so it doesn't have that direct effect but it's going to be very steep now with this little bar here you can set it up in a way that when you come towards the tip you kind of can swivel it this way which is actually resulting in a less steep angle um, than on the main blade, which is sometimes what you want. Or you're setting the whole thing up further towards the tip. And here we're getting, this is actually going into quite a lot of detail. And slightly as an angle. This way you can actually favor the belly of the knife rather when you sharpen. So there's a lot of fine minute details um, that can be talked about. I'm not gonna do this today. I just wanted to show you that they put a double stop in here, one that is specifically for swiveling a knife and one that is not a mix between a hard stop and a round stop, but it's just a hard stop, which means it is a lot more secure. It doesn't wanna accidentally bend like that or like swivel like that it just stays where it's supposed to be scraped other also this design on the back here is really exactly what I'm using I usually put my thumb on here which with this little ledge here or what you want to call that 
it is doing perfectly for me putting my thumb and my fingers on the blade and then I can move it this way. I can also use it like this and push it, use the other hand, do it this way. So this is a much smarter and much more, uh, much more, well, how can you say that, um, practical design really based on, um, on user reviews and user uh, feedback, which is always great to see when a company does that. Other than that, again, it's centered. The back one is really just for a hard stop, going straight across and then lifting, which we're gonna be doing today on this knife. The other one is particularly for sw swiveling. You got, we got rid of the fine adjustment on the back here, but again, plastic threads against metal got loose over time anyways. Still, these are not obsolete. If they didn't come out with this, I would have no issue with this one here. Okay, so nobody needs to run and just get something new and, and like throw this in the trash. This is not a bad jig. I was doing hundreds and hundreds of knife and axes with this thing here, and I probably noodled it out way quicker than other people would because I was just basically doing this hours and hours a day. So don't think about this being obsolete or like a bad design. It is actually a great design and it has some advantages. I like the weight. Um, there is, it is nice to have this micro adjustment on the back if you're just off by hair. This one here just forces you to use the fine adjustment wheel over here that allows you to go single turn, turns up or down, which is fine adjusting this bar by like millimeters up and down, okay? So it's just a different way. Uh, it doesn't get you confused between this one and that one, which one you actually should turn and then in the end you over adjust this and that, but there is advantages to this old one too. So again, this is not obsolete, this is not bad, don't worry about it. Now, I'm just gonna bring this over here a little bit, all my Swedish stuff here in the background. Um, and we're gonna hop from my 1T4 with the diamond, um, two diamond wheels, uh, both running in water, of course. Uh, huge advantage, you're not gonna overheat your blades, the speed is not innovated, you're gonna mess something up terribly super quickly, and there's, of course, way less risk than on any high-speed setups. Um, the diamond wheels also have the advantage that they don't shrink in the size as you wear them, so you can really hop from one to the other wheel without any adjustments. Like when you have natural stones, and this one would be a regular one, and this would be a Japanese 4000, for example. Sometimes you need to do adjustments because this one might be at 19.7, and this might be at 19.9 or 20. So that's the, that is the advantage. This advantage um, is that they're expensive, and they got, will wear off over time, while a regular water stone that they come with, you can rough up um, and true out, and you can use all the way until it's like literally gone. So but these one will wear out over time at some point. Um, but I think um, advantages, disadvantages kind of weigh each other up. So in, at the end of the day, um, what, whichever setup you have, it's just perfect. So this is the T4 Bushcraft and this is the regular T4. Um, I'm gonna sharpen this cheapest Mora knife available here. This is a Mora 511, I think it's called. I bought it in Sweden together with, <coughs> excuse me, way more. Other Moras, um, way more than I actually want to um, admit. This is the cheapest you can get. I think it's a, like the carbon steel blade. Um, what I usually do is I get sometimes rid of that finger guard there, um, which is allowing me to just really have it as a puko uh, and have a little bit more handle size to play with and choke up on it and stuff like that. So sometimes even make leather sheaths for it because this is still such a great knife. Um, it's just very quickly made. It doesn't have the super wide or thick blades or anything like that but a very, very nice knife. Um, is it the sharpest? Definitely not, um, but we're gonna work on this right now and we're gonna get it to an insanely stupid sharpness. Um, paper cutting tests are kind of stupid. So there is a little bit of issue there. If you get it right, it does kind of cut, but it can be a lot better. Um, my arms don't really have a lot left to check. Um, definitely does not shave. At the end of the day, um, I want this to be popping here off like crazy. So um, let's get right into it. Sometimes what I do, I don't have the diamond uh, file up here. It's down in the workshop, but usually I put a little sharpening choil in here. Um, that can be done on the side of the tomic here.
not the prettiest thing in the world, but it's probably not good for the diamond wheel either, but it just gives me kind of a starting point here without like getting a really ugly recurve blade. So first thing I'm gonna do, new jig. I'm gonna open it, open it up. I'm gonna put it in about, I don't know, like half a centimeter or something like that, maybe a little bit more, seven millimeters, um, as parallel as possible to the main blade, to the straight part, because this is what we have to worry about most. I'm gonna tighten down a little silver one and then I'm gonna tighten down the back one. Um, and you can see right away, this is actually centered in here. So there will be, if anything, just absolutely minor adjustment. Now, I like the, another thing that comes with the Tormix that's super useful for all kinds of stuff is this thing here. Um, there is some techniques how to check what you wanna achieve in the end, as far as, um, you know, putting it, setting it, putting it on here and checking the existing um, the blade angle. What I like doing is just using the notches. So um, I like putting the Moras at a little bit steeper bevel actually than they come with, because in my opinion, they don't take this. Um, the steel doesn't take those angles too well. Um, as I can tell, well, it's actually better than the carving ones. It is set perfectly right at 25 degrees, as you can see. And we're gonna leave it there, 25, 26 degrees is really nice, which means I just need to color the blade. I'm gonna do this over, I don't know, a couple inches here, not all the way, it's not necessary, because I'm not gonna adjust it once I have it set down here. But I'm gonna put, a, I completely colored that bevel, and as I like the bevel angle it comes in, I'm just gonna check and I'm gonna use the backrest, the, the, the straight backrest here. And I'm gonna just bring the angle up by turning this wheel in, brings the bar up until I feel like it's laying flat. I don't see any shadow underneath anymore. It's maybe something like this. And now I'm just going to by hand put it flat against the bar, turn the wheel a couple times and it shows me that it actually takes material away at the top of the bevel. I want to bring it down a little bit, which means I need to turn it in. There's numbers on here. I'm going to give it half a turn from five to two, see what it does. And that second iteration brought it right into the middle of the bevel. And now I know I want to stick with this. I'm going to give it another, like maybe eighth of a turn or something like that. And that should be just where I want it. Okay, perfect. This is just where I want to be. It's right in the middle of the bevel. This is a very simple way you know, to just stick with what you have, basically. Well, I hope you're gonna be able to see this well. Probably this is the best way to do it. All right, here we go. I'm gonna bring it with my finger against the bar. If you want to, you can also, now that it's set, just turn these in. All right, bring it down. You can see the water is actually Building this little, little back wave there, this little wake. As you can see, we're already getting a nice hollow. Beginning when I got this wheel, it was definitely more aggressive. Understandably, worn it already a little bit over the course of many, many, many knives. And now that we get towards the tip here, here we can run completely straight, which is nice to have this 90 degree stop here without the turning or like without the, the, the radius on the side. Looking good. Another pass.
destroyer. Here we go. New pebble. Hollowed. And now that we're coming out to the tip, what I want to do is keep it like this, the knife, in the same angle, but I just lift it up. It's going to result in a little bit steeper tip, as I said before, because the tip's distance to the bar is going to be a little bit shorter. I don't have a problem with that. Because it's kind of resulting in a little bit of a hybrid grind. I'm kind of a big fan of having a little bit steeper angle at the tip anyways. Um, for the chores I'm using these knives for. And so as you can see, I'm going straight across. And then just lifting up the handle. Blending them into the main bevel. I'm going to show you what it looks like in a moment. It's very important not to lift it up too much. It's going to, that would result in a very rounded tip. Sometimes what I do as well is I bring it my hand against the back like this and that allows me to bring the hand down on the, the knife blade and put a little bit more pressure it looks very nice one more pass in this area here as a transition Just like that, we've got ourselves completely re-beveled Mora, slightly steeper angle at the tip, perfect hollow, and the same angle as the main blade was before, you see a burr, just like that, the burr should be all the way, that's why I'm gonna give it one more couple passes we're good now gonna switch it around to the other side gonna do the other side with a little bit less talking and then we can actually switch over to the final wheel which is always fun. I'm just gonna check here. In theory, it should be exactly at the same angle on the other side, and it actually is. You can see it's removing material again exactly from the middle of the bevel. So, total success in that theory by Tormac. Nicely done. Okay. there
So I need to wait until I see a burr actually occurring, which means that we are hitting the, the very edge from both sides. Otherwise, if we're not getting down to zero, it's not gonna have any, there's no point hopping to the refining wheel. The cool thing is with this new setup that you can literally just switch around to the other side and throw the burr back and forth a couple times. Thinning it out, which wasn't possible before because with the older setup uh, you basically needed to remember what your um, change was basically, what your change in, um, in setup was. This is the side we, wait a second. Which side? This side is the one that we just did. Pretty much flawless. All right, now, the cool thing as well is, if you just have one Tormac and you have two stones because they're the same diameter and they don't change in diameter because they're diamond, you can now just take this one off, put this one over here, and you're gonna be at, at exactly the same angle. Now, I just gonna hop over here though, and I just show you, how quickly you can still just, you know, adjust yourself. Probably would be even easier for me to just swap the stone to the other one with a couple of turns, super easy to take them off. Um, you can see the super fine reflective line, ho hopefully just at the tip, um, hopefully just at the edge. You might not be able to see that, but there is a burr. Now I need to find out where I'm at. Checking for any shadows underneath. Again, I can already tell that that is not where I want to be. Probably getting there, yes. Pretty close. And that is looking quite good. Removes the Sharpie. I'm gonna give it another little bit. Yeah, and there's no resistance here anymore. So I can tell that it's perfectly sitting inside of my hollow. I'll tighten that down. Put it on here. I can tell this is buttery smooth. Looking good. Maybe just a little bit less angle. These fine, super fine diamond wheels are just an absolute pleasure. what that looks like it's just gorgeous almost flawless 
need to get over that one more time compared to this side is a lot more coarse and here the only thing we need to do after this is stropping and we're done really good let's flip around to the other side I know I don't need to adjust that laying perfectly in the bevel of the, the core stone I can totally tell there's like no resistance no sound very very positive and we're pretty much done a couple more passes on the tip Checking in between, Not, the blade of course stays nice and cool, it looks great, looks great. Just gonna flip the bird to the side quickly, thinning it out a little bit. Okay now we're almost done the only thing we need to do now is put it on the leather wheel and we have a great great blade and edge now of course this can be done on secondary bevels I do this a lot with my pocket knives very quick Okay, so there's a fine compound on here, but I've got the um, a little bit more aggressive compound on here, which is uh, just an auto sole paste. Um, it's very similar to the paste that comes with the Tormic. Um, it's just perfect for this application. So now what I usually do is that I just, um, it comes on this spinning thing here. like that can they take the knife out of the jig be careful at this point it is already very 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 sharp um, still this like 22 at uh, 25 degree angle it's already quite acute so this is the before Now let's hit the drop over here. You need to be careful not to touch the wheel over here with your with your grip, so that's why I'm always kind of swiveling out. And then I like giving it a couple of a little bit steeper passes. Then put some micro-convex just behind the very, very edge. It's 
not even feelable, but it strengthens the edge a lot on the other side. Of course, needs to be practiced, like everything. finger nail of course there's any micro edges uh, micro nicks any serrations anything now it's already really really scary sharp and so I usually finish it off with just like my Floyd strop Fine compound. Which usually gives it the edge. So let's check what it does. I'll bring you guys back into normal height. what it does this is a four dollar knife Mora like I said 511 took the guard off uh, super nice puku shape and then with the new knife jig on the Tormig wheels um, when I'm not talking and I can concentrate a little bit more this is kind of like a five to ten minute job um, I don't know how many hair I have actually left on my arm, but the thing is that they're just um, they're popping off without any sound or resistance. It leaves complete, completely perfect baby butts. So in between what I like doing quite a lot is um, just throwing it right back onto that wheel. Um, that has become a very, very often used uh, strategy by me during my carving sessions. Um, if I need to get the, the edge back to uh, scoop sharp, then I'm just um, throwing it on here. And it even takes care of the really short hair that uh, I checked on yesterday and it, it leaves a surface that is what you get from a like a razor like a gillette or something like that and this is what sharp it really is and what I work with and what gets me the perfect um, finish on my work because as you know of course nothing is uh, sanded nothing is machined on here this is just knife finish so all of my knives in these hardwoods like this is Rowan Mountain Ash um, all of this stuff Apple Birch um, they all get a finish like this because I now have the setup here to work with. Alright, so this one goes back into the sheath, um, right back into the shop. Uh, it's, it's now a, a knife that is basically worth way, way more than the $4.99 or something that it costs in, in, in Austria and the 
three bucks that it actually cost up in Sweden. Uh, it's a carbon steel knife, two millimeter thickness now with a 25 degree hollow ground Scandi edge. Um, I would have no issue making this my main blade uh, on my belt going into a um, into, into the Swedish woods, uh, skinning something with or like depending my daily livelihood on a knife like this. Um, and well, how you're tuning it and what you're working with, how you're working with it, um, makes a huge difference. So, uh, yeah, folks, uh, this has been fun, hopefully for y'all. Uh, I just wanted to give you a glimpse into uh, how I use the new Tormek uh, KJ uh, 30, uh, 45, knife jig, 45 millimeters, uh, with all the improvements, the centering, the different stages, blah, 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 um, on knives and how it can upgrade a very, very cheap knife to something that you can easily depend your livelihood on. All right, folks, um, please check me out over on Boot TV. You, if you're going through Woodsman's Finest, my Instagram channel, you can actually get all 105 plus hours of my course platform for five euro the first month um, which means and there's every month i'm adding a course by now there's 39 courses um leather craft but mainly spoon carving sharpening um decorations paint jobs different styles that i'm doing um talking about carving axes there's so much it's over 100 hours um you can get it through my instagram channel an entire month, all access to all of it for five euro. Um, so what I did today here, just imagine it, you can watch it over and over again, a lot more insight on my entire triple C method, my body lock system, um, the Tenuichi for carving system, all of the things that I've created based on my martial arts and the uh, outdoor education background um, for carving to make it more successful, easier and more fun for people and especially safer. Um, you can get all of that on Boon TV slash Woodsman's Finest. Um, so again, head over to Instagram, subscribe, uh, like over there. Please like and subscribe to this channel as well. There's hundreds of videos on here too. Um, and that makes it possible for me to keep doing these things. People thinking that content is created by, you know, just us like, you know, frolicking or something like that. That's BS. Um, this takes hours and hours, um, a lot of equipment, a lot of our time editing, paying for software, paying for music, all this kind of stuff. If you're not helping out on Patreon uh, or like by going to my website, finding my work, buying my work, supporting my courses, this and that, this is not possible, which means that if you're not supporting people who are doing this professionally and improving and getting this info to you, um, this kind of stuff is going to die out, as simple as that. So I appreciate the support. Um, please head over to Instagram, Facebook, and of course, woodsmansfinance.com. Subscribe to the, the email and all that good stuff. And I hope um, you had a good time watching me get this Moro 511 from factory to absolutely insanely stupid sharp. Here we go. Check everything out today i'm gonna launch a course in the afternoon about how i'm doing my let me see where it is i'm doing my axe masks this one is by the way available swedish old axe completely refurbed completely resharpened with a custom axe mask you'll find that course today in the afternoon live on boon tv i'm gonna take you through everything you need to know well, how to make this most useful X mask design out there. Okay, gonna catch you later. You guys stay safe. Cheerio.